is competitive programming with PyCat and it will be presented by Enpa Juk. Hi, thank you. Uh, well, during the past several years, uh, I had a, a lot of fun participating in various uh, competitions using the PyCat language, uh, including Managing Challenge, XS, XCSV uh, Solver Competition, uh, Google Code Jam, and uh, uh, Logic Program Contest. And through these uh, competitions, uh, well, I have sharpened my programming skill and also uh, tested the fitness of the Python language. And, uh, well, I uh, jointly with my uh, team members have won various awards and uh, last year I took the first place uh, in the, uh, on the online track uh, in the logic programming uh, program contest. Uh, the purpose of this presentation is to share with you uh, the solutions. Uh, so before that, I would like to uh, give an overview of the PyCat language. Uh, PyCat is a logic-based uh, multi-paradigm program language that supports logic programming, functional programming, dynamic programming, constraint programming, and also Python-style scripting. Uh, the name uh, is an acronym. Each of the letters uh, stands for a feature of the language, people pattern matching, I for intuitive programming, C for constraints, A for actors, and T for tabling. Uh, PyCat okay, it was greatly influenced uh, by the prologue language, uh, as uh, you see uh, in the fundamental concepts, okay, logic variables, uh, matching, unification, and also non-determinism. And uh, the language, uh, is enhanced with uh, uh, various language constructs for modeling and scripting, including functions, loops, uh, comprehensions, and assignments. PyCat also provides facilities for modeling and solving combinatorial problems, including uh, tabling for dynamic programming and planning, and also various kinds of solar modules. Uh, the PyCAD system is underpinned uh, by uh, well, a logic engine uh, that is a redesigned word abstract machine. On top of that, seats uh, cannot perform rules, uh, which can be seen as an intermediate language. All high-level language constructs are compiled to this intermediate language. Well, the PyCAD system has been embraced by the community, warmly embraced. A lot of people have contributed to the project. Okay. So several people have contributed the tools to make it more user-friendly, more efficient, and more robust. Uh, logic uh, variables uh, in PyCAD, just like Prolog, are logic variables. A variable is a value order. A value is a term. A term can be another variable, or an atomic term, or a compounded term. All right, most of this, these data types are from Prolog, and uh, except arrays and uh, maps or hash tables. Okay, in PyCAD, you can easily create uh, an array and use uh, uh, built-in operators to manipulate access arrays. And uh, you can easily create hash tables uh, and use the put to, you know, put pairs into a table and use get to get the value associated with the key. Uh, I'm sorry, I have a question about the previous slide. What are the types are, I mean, these are subtypes on the right hand side? Uh, this, is the, this hierarchy means that everything, every value is a term, and a term can be a variable. Yes, can be so, a, so why is a set a subset of that? Uh, yeah, it is a hash table. A set is also a hash table, but it's a, it's like a pair that contains only keys, no values. Uh, in a canonical form.
form. Okay, all rules, uh, well, uh, take this form. Either a rule is either uh, backtrackable, non backtrackable, and the semantics is pretty simple. Okay, for a predicate call, if the call matches the head uh, and uh, satisfies the condition, then the call will be rewritten to the body. All right, if the, the rule is non backtrackable, then that means the rewriting is a commitment. If body fails, then okay, you cannot backtrack to a call. Uh, if the rule is backtrackable, in case body fails, then okay, execution will be backtracked, backtracked to the call, and uh, an alternative rule can be tried. So here are two versions of the member uh, predicate. Okay, the first one is non-deterministic, and the second one okay is deterministic. So the first one, you can use it to check if an element, a value is an element of a list. You can also uh, use uh, uh, a query to generate all the elements in a list. So you can use this to do generate and a test. Okay, the second version can be used to check if a uh, value is an element of a list. Uh, there are commonalities between uh, pattern matching rules in PyCat and uh, home clauses in Prolog. All right, but there are also uh, differences. And the big difference is, okay, rules are pattern matching rules, unlike in Prolog, clauses are unification based. So and uh, so pattern matching rules are like okay, rules in GHC guarded home clauses, but there are no laziness or freeze. So in case, for example. Okay, the goal is not sufficiently instantiated, then it does not freeze. Okay, so for example, this one fails. Pattern matching facilitates uh, indexing. So all input arguments are used in indexing. So that means if you have large number of rules, okay, PyCAD can, can be significantly faster than Prolog. And as the unification is still supported, but it's supported like a constraint. Okay, it is. Uh, uh, it has to be written explicitly. Okay, same as non-determinism. Non a rule is backtrackable or non-backtrackable. Then you need to denote it explicitly. Okay, so in this case, you don't need a cut. You didn't the cut off right? Well, high-level constructs are provided as syntax triggers. Okay, so all these functions, loops, comprehensions, and assignments. They are compiled to canonical form rules. Uh, so functions, well, you can say functions, you can write functions as you do in Haskell. Okay, there are some diff big differences. Okay, for example, okay, uh, this power set, okay, if the list, if the set is empty, then the power set contains only the empty set. Otherwise, you have head and a tail, okay, you get the power set of the tail, and for each subset, okay, in P1, yeah, and then you add the head to S, so to form another subset in P2, and then you concatenate P1 and P2. So, very similar to Haskell. Okay, but there are diff big differences. Okay, PyCat is a dynamically typed language, and uh, it's a strict language. Okay, it supports high order functions, but not as good as Haskell. Uh, for each loops, all right, loops, you may think uh, loops are imperative. Actually, it has declarative meaning. Okay? So you can use loops to encode universally quantified, uh, uh, quantifies, okay, in logic. So the meaning is uh, for each pair of uh, each combination of values, E1 in D1, EN in DN, okay, if this uh, tuple of values satisfy the conditions, okay, then this goal is true. Okay, it has a declarative meaning. A loop forms a naming scope. Okay, so variables that occur within a loop, but not before its outer scope, are treated as local to each iteration. So, for example, okay, in this loop, okay, this loop, I in this range, and you, uh, okay, assign this entry uh, to X, unify this entry and X. Well, since x only occurs in inside of this loop, so x is a local variable, so that means all these elements are uh, different distinct uh, variables. If x occurs 
uh, before, okay, the loop then actually is treated as global to every iteration. Okay, then after this, okay, all the entries will be unified to the same variable. Well, this comprehension is a declarative way uh, to uh, construct the lists. Okay, so the meaning is okay, very simple. So for each tuple of values, if the tuple satisfies the conditions, then this element is added into the list. Okay, you can see okay, if x in, the, in this range, x is even, then you get this uh, uh, list of even numbers. Okay, you can have uh, uh, this one is uh, like a Cartesian product, A in this set, or in this set, then, okay, you get all pairs. You can also have called parallel loops, so you can use zip function, all right, so A or I, this pair is in the zipped list, all right, so for each one, you create a pair in the list. Well, actually, the compiler is smart. The compiler does not create a zipped list first and then iterate over the list. So it compiles, basically it compiles it away. Again, a list comprehension forms the naming scope. Okay, so uh, in this case, X occur, only occurs in the list comprehension, so it is treated as local. Okay, in this uh, example, X occurs before the loop, so X is treated as uh, global. What's the underscore? Underscore is called a uh, given problem. That's called an anonymous variable. Uh -huh. So why L is not underscore underscore five underscores? Uh, that's a good question. So X, uh, well, because underscore and X are the same variable. Uh, if you say say underscore underscore, that means all the variables are different. You mean you have you have two underscore variables? These two are different. <coughs> uh, in problem, same in problem. What's the semantics? One of them is a compound, uh, like in the first thing you have a uh, uh, FMX, uh, because find only problem has a different semantic than math would have. Uh, would copy if, if you have a component term, term, then you create a component term. term. For each element, you create a component term. term. If it's a function call, then you call the function, so and it gets the value okay, from the function call. And the logic value one gets the like hated or it's one and the same? Uh, logic, uh, it's also, if uh, the same rule. Okay, if the variable occurs before, then it's treated as global. If it does not occur before, then it's treated as local. Okay. okay. Very clear, very clear semantics. All right, this, uh, the uh, Python supports uh, assignments. There are two types of assignments. Okay, one is, all right, the left-hand side is the index operator. Okay, in this case, okay, the component of this compound term will be destructively updated. All right, and the update is on down or come back tracking. If the left hand side is a variable, okay, then the compiler introduces a new variable, temporary variable, and replaces all subsequent occurrences of X uh, by this new variable. So basically, uh, it is just a uh, syntax sugar. So everything is compiled to uh, logic variables. And uh, this table compares uh, PyCAD and Haskell. Okay, so there are you know, commonalities and differences. Okay, one big difference, okay, you can see uh, Haskell does not have atoms. Atoms are just like internalized strings. So you compare two strings, no matter how long the strings are, it takes constant time to compare them because they are internalized. And another thing is, okay, uh, Haskell does not support unification, it does not support backtracking. And uh, there are actually, there is a bigger advantage, uh, well, uh, same, okay, to uh, uh, logic programming languages, uh, such as Prolog. So for lists, you can add a first in constant time, you can add a last in constant time, you can even do concatenation in constant time. That's the advantage of Prolog, okay? So, uh, because what do you do? You just keep the end open, and then you can keep adding elements at the end. All right, so if you have two different lists, we call two different lists, you can concatenate the two lists in constant time. Well, actually, uh, that, is, that has been found, okay, 40 years ago by DHD Warren, when he compared <coughs> this and the problem. Okay. All right, uh, let's compare PyCat and a Python. Again, okay, there are some commonalities and the differences. Okay, the big differences, okay, Python does not have, you know, atoms, does, okay, same here. That does not have unification, does not uh, have uh, backtracking. And, uh, you know, Python, uh, in Python, a list is a dynamic array. So it takes constant.
some time to add an element at the end, but it takes linear time to add an element at the beginning. Okay, one big difference is, okay, variables in Python are inherent variables, okay, but in Python, variables are logic variables. Okay, so, again here, there are differences, okay, if you know how to add elements uh, at the beginning, at the end, uh, and you concatenate uh, two lists in constant time, then, okay, you can be an expert, okay, in this, uh, uh, in Python in program. So here is the version uh, in, uh, uh, in Python, all right, so, so basically very similar, but uh, Python is not good at handling uh, recursion, it's not good at uh, dealing with this, actually this version, you compare uh, the PyCat version and uh, the Python version, PyCat is many times faster uh, than Python. All right, so uh, let's talk, let me talk about facilities for combinatorial uh, search. Uh, so PyCat supports tabling. Okay, so it is very easy to do tabling. Uh, but what do you do? You just add a keyword uh, before the uh, definition, then everything will be tabled. All right, you can also do uh, mode directed tabling. So uh, instead of tabling everything, uh, you can you direct the compiler what should be tabled. Okay, for example, in this case, in this uh, plan, okay, in this case, this is the import and this is okay minimized. So only uh, solutions okay with the minimum value okay is tabled. PyCat supports uh, constraint modules, and actually, uh, so all these uh, solver modules have the same API, set, CP, MIP, and SMT. Okay, this API, okay, uh, allows you to define domain variables, write arithmetic constraints, boolean constraints, table constraints, and global constraints. And then you just need to use a solver, okay, to uh, invoke the solver, okay. So it is a very simple uh, API. So with this API, you can switch from one solver to another seamlessly. Uh, so here is an example. Uh, all right, uh, 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 for the increase problem, okay, actually, so you just create a list of variables, and then you declare the domain of the variables, and then you write three or different constraints, and then you call solve to solve, uh, to instantiate the variables. So uh, let's compare. <coughs> well, compare in comparison with the uh, Apple uh, and Minizank. Okay, uh, PyCat. Uh, okay, actually similar as a modern language. Okay, it's similar to Apple and uh, Minizank. Okay, it supports loops and it supports list comprehensions. So and uh, but uh, uh, as also. It supports uh, multiple solvers, backend solvers, but there are differences. PyCat is a general purpose language, so it is okay. You can convert, say, minizing models to PyCat easily, but not vice versa. And also, okay, as a general purpose language, you can experiment with different uh, models, you know, uh, different uh, easily. Uh, ASP can be considered as another model language uh, for CSP. Uh, but uh, there are uh, hidden rules, yeah, hidden, I'm sorry, hidden rules and uh, list comprehensions. Hidden rules, okay, so for example, in this, in, in here, okay, basically this is just like a list comprehension, okay, so you get a list of queen facts, all right, so uh, the cardinality uh, is equal to n. All right, now uh, let me talk about uh, the competition uh, and uh, the, the problems and the solutions. Okay, it is an annual uh, program contest uh, run with the ICOP conference. Uh, last year, it was held in New Mexico, uh, organized by Jose and uh, Oconto. And uh, there were uh, five problems, uh, all combinatorial. Uh, you can find the PyCat solutions on the PyCat website. And, uh, well, the first problem is called the NES sum. Uh, this is, uh, well, giving three numbers, A, B, and C, in an alien based in numbering system. All right, what do you want to do? Okay, you want to 
uh, basically decipher the numbers. Okay, which number, okay, which any number is which decimal number. So, you know, what you are, what you are, you were told, okay, list the significant, significant digit occurs first, and all digits are present in the numbers. And also, you know, this equation, A plus B equals C. And also, you, there is a unique mapping, okay, from the alien digits to the decimal numbers, okay. Well, actually, in competitions, this type of questions occur quite frequently in competitions. I have seen this uh, variance in Google Code Gem several times. All right, so for example, you give me this A, B, C. Okay, what do you do? You just find the mapping. Okay, so, okay you map 48 to 0, 49 to 1. Okay, this equation holds. All right, so let's see the uh, the input. Okay, this input, okay, I think since uh, 2015, when I organized the competition, I uh, used this input format to accommodate, accommodate various kinds of, uh, you know, uh, CP and LP systems. So inputs or facts. All right, so in this example, you say A, okay, the first one is 40, uh, 48, okay, and the second uh, digit in A is uh, 48, and so on. And the output, okay, you gives the mapping, yeah, gives the mapping. All right, so here is the solution. All right, normally uh, in a presentation, you don't want to read the code, okay, but uh, since uh, we use PyCAD and the solution is quite concise and it's quite straightforward. So what do you do? You read the terms, okay, uh, okay read the terms, so it's a list of facts. And what do you do? You create a three arrays, yeah, three arrays, and then you uh, retrieve the facts, uh, retrieve the alien digits, okay, into these arrays, good? And then what do you do? Okay, find all the digits, okay? So you get the digits, so this is a base n, okay? Base n number, so n is the number of digits in the, in the numbers. And then what do you do? You create n variables, okay? Each for each n digit. And then declare the domain. The domain is from zero to n minus one. And then what do you do? Uh, all the digits are mapped to different values, or different. And then what do you do? You, okay, you use a map. You use a map, so which digit is mapped to which variable. And then you compute the alien sums, and then, okay, you impose this constraint, A plus B equals C, and then you use the solve. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. All right, this uh, sum, okay, in order to compute the power sum of a number, okay, what do we do? We use this, actually, it uses uh, assignment and it uses a loop. Okay, what do you could do? You could do, use this compression, uh, well, to get the power sum. So what do you do? You first get the powers, all right, good. And then you get the retrieve the variables from the maps, good. And then you do this, use another list comprehension to get the power sum, good. But this version is much more efficient because it only loops through uh, these uh, numbers only once, okay and also computes the power incrementally, but this one loops through the numbers three times and also computes the powers, uh, you know, in, uh, separately, yeah. What's, what's the power sign for? Uh, the dollar sign, yeah, a good question. Uh, I should have uh, explained this, because this lab is supposed to functions. So if uh, the system, if uh, the system does not see dollar sign, then it treats this one as a function call. Okay. With dollar sign, that means uh, okay, the system does not evaluate uh, this term. It treats it as a piece of data. So it's a quote. Uh, yeah, it's uh, just like a, 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 in this space, a backside quote. Yeah, so it's not a function call, it's a piece of uh, data. All right, the second uh, problem is called... <coughs> well, you were returning an expression that day? It uh, returns a term. It returns the term and passes the term to the constraint. Yeah, because it does not return a number. Okay. All right, the second problem is called a Billy the Kid. Okay, the story goes like this. Okay, the director of the de uh, police department uh, wants to uh, deploy his, uh, you know, uh, officers in towns so that wherever he travels, okay, he will meet one of his, at least one of his, one of his officers. Okay, here a travel means a path that involves a given number of towns. 
So it can be seen as a graph covering problem. So given an undirected graph G, the goal of the problem is to find a minimum subset of vertices S, such that any path that involves this number of vertices contains a vertex in S. Okay, so for example, for this graph, let's say the size is 3. Okay, then this is a minimum, a minimum subset, 3 and 4. Okay, you see all paths that involve 3 vertices are covered. For example, 1, 2, 3, you have 3 in it. All right, so 2, 3, 5, okay, you have 3 in it. 4, 5, 6, you have 4 in it. Okay, so it's a graph current problem. So how, uh, this is the input. Okay, so basically it describes the graph and also the size. Okay, and uh, the output, you, you don't need to uh, output the, the uh, subset. You just need to out, output the size of the subset. All right, here's the solution. Uh, well, basically, very straightforward. The idea is you get all the puffs, okay, of the given size, and then you uh, synthesize, synthesize uh, the growth. And uh, what do we do? Okay, this is the list of terms. Okay, from this one, you know the size, okay? And also, you know the size, the number of vertices. So what do you do? Okay, you create an array. Okay, you create an array A. Okay, this so you basically you convert this representation to adjacent adjacent list representation. A is represents is adjacency list. Okay, so you convert this, and then for each uh, you create a set S. S is uh, a list of variables, zero one variables. Okay, so that means if a vertex has a zero, that means it's not in the subset. If the vertex is one, a sign of one, then it is in the subset. So it is zero, one, integer programming problem. All right, so the number of vertices selected is this one. And what do you do? You find all the paths of this given length. Okay, and then you generate constraints to make sure, okay, the sum of this is greater than or equal to one. Yeah? Can you use a set comprehension instead of find all? Uh, for this one, actually, uh, it's not easy. Uh -huh. So that's why you, so we use table, okay, to find a path of a given, uh, of a given length, yeah, okay, uh, this one is dynamic program, you know, okay, it saves, okay, a, a lot of time uh, by using table. So, uh, what is the performance? Okay, so uh, PyCat solved uh, the hardest instance, which consists of 100 vertices, and, uh, one, I'm sorry, and uh, 100 Uh, 94 ages uh, with size 3, okay, in 70, 17 seconds. Okay, so, well, actually, for this one, there's not much to do uh, for encoding, okay, because the constraints is already a uh, closure form, yeah. The sum of these variables is greater than or equal to 1. It's already closure form. Okay. All right, next one is uh, binary for force. Okay, so this is... Uh, well, a popular problem, four fours is a popular problem, a puzzle. <coughs> the goal of this puzzle is to find a simple mathematical expression for expressing a given integer using only mathematical symbols and exactly four fours. Okay? And uh, the variant used in the competition is binary four fours. Okay, so uh, in this problem, you, it's, you, all the operands are eight bit uh, numbers. And uh, you're allowed to use these operators, addition, multiplication, negation, and also complement. Okay, so for example, zero. Okay, you can uh, construct an expression four times four times four times four. Okay, which gives 256. 256 overflows does not fit in eight bits, so it becomes zero. Okay, so in post fix notation, okay, you write it this way. All right, the input, okay, this is a number, all right, that is a required number, and then, okay, this is a postfix, postfix, okay, uh, expression. Okay, this is the solution, basically, it's a planning problem, and uh, what do you do, okay, initially, it's a, initially, okay, you, this is, uh, uh, let's say this is, uh, you want, to, this uh, target number is N, good, this target number is N, and uh, this is number of fools you can use, okay, four fools, good? 
uh, and uh, you want to find uh, a claim yeah, that uh, evaluates to uh, the target number. And then for each operation, okay, you define an action, define a rule. Okay, so uh, the final goal, if the target number, the current number equals the target number, and all four fours are used, okay, then that's a goal of the plan. So after this, you converted the plan to a, you know, a post fix form, and then you output the, the expression. It's so pretty straightforward. All right, next problem, uh, smart rule the runner. Uh, this is probably the hardest problem and a very interesting problem. So given a grid map, the task is to install laser kits on some of the white cells such that the rules of the game are obeyed. Okay, what are the rules of the game? Each cell is either white or black. Good. And, uh, okay, some black cells, black cells have numbers. Okay, this number indicates the number of laser kits, uh, laser kits installed on its neighbors. Okay. And uh, no two laser kits can shoot each other. Okay, so laser beam is blocked if it meets a black cell. Okay, so no two the uh, uh, laser bits can shoot each other. And a white cell that is not covered by any laser beam is said to be safe. Good. And all safe signals must form one closed circuit. So the smart rooted runner can you know, can jog it. Yeah. For example, this in this okay, this is an instance. This is, this is the solution. Okay, this uh, sales are safe sales. Okay, so the smart uh, rooted runner can run in here. Okay, uh, okay. All right. So the input. Okay, basically this gives a graph. Yeah. Okay. X Y coordinates and also where the hills are black sales. And also numbers, designated numbers. Yeah, how many kids, uh, laser kids can be installed uh, on their neighbors. Okay, so the output is just the size of the the, the number of cells in the circuit. Uh, so this is the solution. Actually, again, uh, it is a CSP. What do we do? Okay, here we need some data transformation. So first, from this, we uh, get the size of the grid. Yeah, maximum number, number of uh, number, uh, maximum x, maximum uh, y, and then we create a uh, laser. Okay, that means uh, if it's zero, uh, entry is zero. Uh, I mean, uh, then uh, there is no laser installed there. If uh, the entry is one, that means uh, there is one laser installed there. Okay, so again, this is a, a zero one integer programming problem, and then we first uh, need to enforce. Okay, the Numbers are respected. Okay, if a number is given, then the number of lasers installed on its neighbors is equal to the number. Good. That's the one constraint. And then yes. What's the, it's fun, then. What's double column? Uh, double column just means uh, uh, the variables. The variables. Uh, okay, take this domain. Uh, this is uh, called a domain constraint. All right, and then we create another. Uh, matrix of variables called a row because a laser is zero one. Okay, zero means a laser is in, uh, zero means no laser is installed. One means a laser kit is installed. And in addition to that, because a laser laser beam goes uh, okay uh, far, and we need another uh, matrix. Okay, so this one that means uh, zero or one means zero means okay it is covered by the la a laser beam. Uh, one means uh, uh, it's not covered, so it's safe. Then it is part of the root. Yeah. All right. So what do we do? We basically we generate a constraint over the attack positions for all the attack positions, and uh, we make the constraints. If the laser is in so, uh, if the laser is there, then this cell cannot be a root. Yeah. Okay. So and also in the end we have this grid constraint. Okay. All the uh, all the uh, root cells uh, form a circuit, okay, form a Hamilton cycle. Yeah, is a Hamilton has a Hamilton cycle. All right, actually, this version is an improved version. In the original version, I submitted, I used a general sub circuit constraint. 
So I converted this graph to a general graph and then called the general constraint. All right, in the improved version, okay, we have a special subscape on grid uh, graphs. Okay, so uh, actually, uh, this one requires a lot of effort okay, to encode this constraint. Uh, you can find the details uh, in this paper. What's the uh, pound sign? This pound sign is, means it is a constraint. Without pound, it's unification. It means unification. With pound, this means it is uh, equality constraint. Okay, and the implication is constraint? Yeah, implication again, it is a constraint. Without the implication, it is something else. It means something else. Okay, and kill the negation? Uh, yeah, that's uh, negation. Good guess. Uh, so here, okay, this is uh, again the challenge, most challenging instance. Uh, is 30 by 30. Okay, you see the numbers. It's a pretty hard problem, and I can solve this problem in 56 uh, seconds. And uh, by the way, the time limit uh, used in the competition is two two minutes. Two minutes. The initial version uh, didn't satisfy. Okay, didn't uh, didn't so couldn't solve the this instance. I think uh, the initial version solved the, the instance in eight minutes. Okay, that exceeded the time limit. All right, the last problem actually is uh, the easiest problem. So it's a typical. So the previous thing, it didn't show us the function, the definition of the new one. <coughs> Which function? I mean, the previous thing, you say you introduced the new one, the sub-circuit word. This is the built-in now. Oh, it's a built-in. It, it's, built it's a built-in in Python. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, if I show this one, then uh, <coughs> the, uh, okay, it does so not build one page. Maybe function. I need, it, I need oh. 10 slides to show this code. Okay. Yeah. All right, the last one is a typical operations research uh, problem. So, uh, well, let's say the, the conference was held in New Mexico. Uh, they were organizing uh, uh, these tools okay, to white sets. All right, so uh, the tool operators, uh, well, offer packages. Packages, each package, okay, includes some units of activities, and each package has a price, good? And uh, you also have called needs or demands. Say, uh, okay, say uh, 100 people want to go horse riding, and 50 people want to go, uh, you know, hiking, and 20 people want to go apple picking. Yeah. So these are uh, demands. So what is the problem? Okay. And there is also a limit on the number of packages one can buy from each operator. Okay. What is the question? The question is, okay. So what you want to decide? Uh, what offers to buy in order to meet the demands and also minimize the total cost. Okay, actually, this one is the easiest. Okay. So this is the input, and the, this is the total program. Everything is included again. Okay, so what do you do? Just uh, generate the constraint. Okay, you make sure okay, the amount you buy is greater than uh, or equal to the amount you need. Okay? And also, you make sure Okay, the number of packages you buy from each operator does not exceed the limit. And then you also want to minimize the total cost. Okay, that's it, yeah? So it's pretty straightforward. All right, conclusion. Uh, well, this uh, solutions demonstrate uh, PyCat fits as a competitive program language. PyCat is expressive. All right, so uh, logic variables, mathematical rules, these are good for describing best computations. And uh, non-determinism non is good for search problems, okay, for example, planning problems. And uh, it offers useful data structures, including arrays, maps, and sets okay, for uh, modeling. And it offers high-level constructs for scripting and modeling. Okay. And PyCat is efficient. Okay, it could be much faster than Python for algorithmic uh, solutions. Okay, for example, for this uh, power set, okay, PyCat is several times faster. Okay, than Python, and also it provides a rich toolbox for combinatorial search problems, including planning, technical dynamic programming, and okay, several set modules. All right, so PyCat wouldn't be possible without 
you know, uh, many country uh, collaborators, contributions from uh, collaborators, and also, okay, so funding organizations. So I would also like to thank, uh, okay, the program contest chairs, and also uh, thank for the panel chairs for giving, giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. <laughs>